Hey, get brought here along with, uh, you probably know his name by near, by now, Tiger. This is a, uh, another ship video for the Outland series. If you don't know what the Outland series, I'll link a video up here. Uh, but if you're on this channel, by now you know, you should know what Outlands is. So we'll get right into it. Today, we're looking at the uh, Warspite, uh, a one-off ship of the Palantine, or as all, all of us like to call it, the Palpatine-class cruiser. This is a armored cruiser by the series design, thus it has heavy armor throughout the ship. Modern heavy cruisers in our series aren't allowed heavy armor, so this is a very unique design. Why am I talking when I, can, uh, I have Tidier right here, the designer of the ship, and uh, he'll handle a lot of the talking about this ship for us. Hey, Tidier. Hey there. Nice to be back. Cool, cool. Uh, I guess we'll hop right into it. This was... So technically, the CDF got a cruiser before this because they won one in one of the rewards. Uh, episode 4, I believe. They got a modified Cerberus. However, I think... If I'm not mistaken, this is the correct... Or the correct... This is the first cruiser designed for the CDF faction, right? Exactly. This is the first cruiser the CDF deployed on their own, and with the new cruiser rules, the Wasp Bite, the Palpatine are starting as well. Yeah. The, pa the Palatine class will be a one of a kind, and it's basically a unicorn by now. And the idea with the Palatine class was to deploy a ship that was basically a bigger Aventine, since we have had a lot of success with these vessels. And this frame, the chassis, was the first iteration of the Aventine. And then I noticed, okay, there's no chance I'm going to keep this in the block limit when I finish the ship. So the Aventine saw some significant overhauls while I kept working on the chassis and it evolved into this vessel here. So it's no surprise it gets commonly mistaken for an Aventine from the distance. Um, I guess we can hop into some of the questions. My, my favorite thing with ship design is... Assuming you design ships like this, not everyone does, but I think it's a smart way to go about designing ships. What was the war sp war sp what was the war spites like objective? If if it had one objective, what was the design principle guiding the war spite? The design objective here was clearly with just destroyers and the CDF faction, we were lacking a lot of firepower that the riders could bring. But observing the tactics of the riders and also the eternity to some point, we noticed what we do was a ship that could comfortably apply a lot of damage from the distance without having to go into CQB range with the whole enemy formation. So the Palantine was supposed to be an artillery cruiser. And with its weapon layout, it's capable to fire all these 400s uh, straight ahead without having having to rely on super firing positions. But of course, it also limits its maneuverability. The ship has to be pointed on tar target all the time and deal with incoming fire. So the good thing here is that it's also the ne most narrow profile that you can aim at. So the protection is basically its size. The design works very good uh, depending on how strong is your escort and how does the enemy behave. If you manage to keep all your guns on target, it works super well. We have an occasion in, uh, can't we call the episode right now, but uh, first introduction of the war fight. It was approached by an enemy outlander right on the front and the ship was just eaten before because it was staring into all the guns. The, uh, the rider's cruiser was taken out and with a single volley. Close, keep on your firepower. No! Oh, what the fuck? What? what? Okay, well, that's... Watch out for those fob shots. Oh, that's down! Almost that down? Amazing. Yeah, Almost just us. Oh. He just got the bridge sniped. Heading to the gotcha. CIC. Can you confirm that the ammunition is stationary? It is not moving, it is not moving. Due to a bridge kill, because you having, like, because you have eight bar barrels on the ship with 400s incoming, even if you dodge most of them, some of them will land on target. And very important to note for this strategy is as well, the ship has a fob that needs to be pointed on target. So it was convenient to place the turret in, turrets in that way, so you can keep them all on target while you uh, aim down with the fob as well. Yeah, so I guess in so it's very strong when you have nose authority and you're bearing down on a target. However, in, unless it's a small destroyer where two, like half of your firepower can take care of it, um, the ship probably struggles fleeing, right? When it's trying to evade fire, very little of its firepower can be on target. 
Uh, do you want to do a, a look of the ship, or do, is there anything else you want to mention? I notice you have other ships over here. Sure. Mm, we can maybe start off with with the other ships here. Yeah. So the first vessel to see here in line with the red color is was the first draft for the CDF Destroyer I started back in January when we started pulling in first designs. It evolved very good, but like I said, I soon noticed this will go way over the block limit when it's finished. So the Aventine eventually went in another direction. I cut it out a big portion of the, of the hull. And with this design, the first plan was to make it a heavy cruiser and make it a heavy artillery cruiser. So we have this one that in the middle that looks a lot more like the now finished Aventine. But it's it's just big in every every case. It's wider. It's significantly longer. I doubled up on the atmospheric thrusters and made the thruster pack in general much larger. And then I noticed we have the gun sitting here and a lot of empty space that I could not utilize correctly. It's apart from just stuffing much more redundant power systems in there. Then we started to change the rules, adapt the rules, introducing mods that gave us more volume on the oxygen and hydrogen tanks, and all of this stuff was not needed anymore. So. I decided to downscale the ship again and eventually turned it into the palata and we see now making it much smaller and therefore harder to hit and it's way more comfortable to maneuver as well yeah like the, CDF the other really like using their small ships so having docking ports are quite important it seems thank you i think i have the timer block active yeah for the close close the doors you have to pass them a bit quickly because all my CDF boys tend to, yeah, let's all man the ships, then, yeah, the riders take the sweet time. So it's, hey, come to the fob, praise the tank. Everybody storms off the ship, leaves the door open, vents the whole thing, and, yeah. Basically, it's opening all of, on all the ships, so I decided to put in timer blocks and they had to close them automatically. So, uh, this is the main bridge, the flight bridge, to be saying. It's a bit dark in here, but uh, I think you can find your way around. Mm -hmm. Not much to say here, not much to see here. Uh, I tucked it in as good as I could, but yeah, if you get a full volume here, this will get shredded eventually. But it does, did a good job so far, could eat quite a lot of fire. And yeah, this area down here was just to make it a bit more pretty. We could bre have briefings in here. And uh, the, the point is, uh, everything that's important on the ship, the core, to be saying, is located be below this area here. So we're standing basically on a big plate of every armor. This is where the reactor is. This is where you can also find the hydrogen tank and everything. Yeah, you so, can say, now, uh, since this is a cruiser, and uh, cruisers are rare in this series, for uh, especially if you're not the riders, um, it, it, it does have some command and control capability, right? Lore-wise, you would have your command staff on the cruiser and not a destroyer. Absolutely. This is by by this point of the series, this is one of the biggest ships we can deploy, and also one of the most advanced. And due to the heavy armor, the most resilient ones. I would say so, this is probably the flagship. Like it, it's not really treated as a flagship lore wise yet, but the War Spike mm -hmm. numerically is probably the the flagship of the the CDF, right? Agreed. Yes, we have the Elysium as well, but since it's uh, totally not stolen, uh, this that, is that would be a very CDF awkward uh, mm -hmm. flagship. Okay, we can take a short look in here. Okay. Also built for redundancy. Do you see my flashlight? It doesn't say anything. No. Okay. No, uh, back, back up survival kits. And this area is basically just a hallway that allows us to repair parts from the uh, ship from inside. Story, of course, we're not allowed to repair something within the actual fights. But if we had the occasion that we would run around in here, we can enter the thruster, the thruster pods and and do some it's kind of glitched out <laughs> it's kind it's kind of glitched out and there's not much to see here it, i tried to make a good mix with the ship of uh looking cool and being as performance friendly as possible so all the the interior lay, layout is there but it's not really finished yet there will be a fully outfitted version of the wasp fight eventually that's also available in the workshop but for now this is the proper server version so it's kept at the uh, responsible minimum yeah. because of the greatest stuff. So, and here we enter the CIC. It's located a bit, um, pretty much in the center of the ship, far in the rear. You got uh, the control seat where you could still, and, and if the worst case happens, feel free to take a look, uh, 
point uh, point the fob on the target and also all the guns on the target. My left, your right. We enter somewhere the living quarters of the ship. Shitter as you need them. Showers. Because eternity makes us sweat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so cryopods for the night shift crew. And the redundancy package of reactors. This is an area that will be significantly impacted by the, the overhaul because there's not much to see here apart from uh, two additional reactors that eat a, eat a lot of space. I like the and, uh, oxygen tank is protected very importantly. Yeah, it's protected. I want to expose it a bit more because uh, you don't protect the oxygen tank, the oxygen tank protects you. <laughs> but it's it's not it's not that pretty. I will see if I can find a way to make this a bit more eh, convenient and smoother. But yeah, like it does the job. This is the hangar, right? A bit much more detailed. We can park a wrist in here. Not sure if an uh, Osprey would fit in here, but for our dropships or even a fighter, this will do. And take, take taking a peek. Is, uh... <laughs> yep, a wooden floor, of course. We have to draw people with, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, oh, it's an exit. Okay, cool. I didn't know this existed. <laughs> yeah, we, we had some secondary airlocks in there, so there are a few more ways to enter or leave the ship. And if you have to take ways, a peek... Uh, for the CDF to flood the ship uh, out of oxygen. <laughs> exactly. And if you take a peek behind these uh, transparent LCDs, you can take a look at the main reactor that's okay. tucked in there. I see you. Mm, and that's basically it so far. Cool. Uh, any uh, shout outs or last closing remarks before we take off? Uh, closing remarks, shout outs, of course, again to the CDF and some um, to the writers as well. I had the opportunity to blast a few shots into the Ravager in some semi uh, friendly <laughs> encounters before we bought the ship live. And the uh, shout out I forgot the last time, which I feel very ashamed about, is of course to um, uh, my good friend Duff Knight, who provided us with the oxygen and Hydrogen tank mod and also uh, Ayivo, Mad Dog, Abatar, who's in the CDF as well. Uh, these are the guys who kept me playing this game and were, had significant impact on my ship designs and caused me to keep improving on the ships and the ship designs. So well, thanks for that, guys. Had great years so far and many more, more to come. Cool. I think uh, for the viewer that's watching this, uh, since the the War Spite is a one of class. Like, if you see this ship, it's this ship right here. There, there won't be any more, as far as I can tell, unless armored cruisers come up as a reward, which they probably will not. So, uh, yeah. We'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching.